Hello, everyone. This is Danny Cisco with the For His Glory program. And we're everything that we do here and say is for His glory. We thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about trust. And I'm going to share with you uh, three ways that a, a blind person can have mobility. Also, going to share a, a, a scripture with you and a, a prayer at the end. And um, so uh, just sit back and relax, um, listen um, to the program, and, and hope that uh, something we say, something that's done, uh, will bless you today. After all, that's what we're here to do. We're here to lift you up, encourage you, and uh, give you hope in this uh, hopeless world. Uh, the three, uh, as I said, I'm going to share a verse with you. Also, we're going to talk about three different ways that blind people ha can have mobility and uh, which the, you know, the three are uh, with the cane, a service animal, and a uh, human guide. So with uh, no f further ado, let's uh, get started. Uh, we have here the verse, one of my favorite verses in the Bible from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. One more time, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. It's Proverbs 3 and 5. That's uh, reading from the King James Version. And basically, it's, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory there that um, we need to put all of our trust in God. You know, uh, we... Um, uh, everything we say, everything we do, uh, even though uh, we don't see things happening or we're in certain circumstances or situations that don't seem to be clearing up, but still put all your trust in God and He will take care of you. I want to uh, give you a little bit of education here, I guess, uh, you might call it, uh, where uh, the three major uh, ways that blind people can get around and uh, and then all these all these that I share with you I have been trained in <clears throat> excuse me uh, first of all I want to talk to you about the cane uh, there's um I know you've probably been out and seen uh, blind people that had these uh, white canes in their hands and and I want to share with you how those actually work and uh, and all this will tie in together with with trust. So remember that. But I want to uh, the way these these canes work is he, the person takes the handle and they stick it just just above or right at the the belly button, and um, you uh, go back and forth. You know, just kind of rake back and forth to uh, about shoulder length, and you're basically making yourself a path. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if that stick run in, runs into anything or stuff, it knows you know uh, to go around that. This is called sweeping. Also, uh, another technique is which is called shorelining, which is you, you position the handle in basically the same place, uh, right above your belly button or right at it, and you uh, uh, go to the side, and, and two, if there's two different surfaces, they, like, grass uh concrete then you know uh that line there you that can guide you uh, i mean gravel grass um you know if it's two different surfaces even like um a wall or and in, in the floor you know uh to go along and, and that is called shore lining uh a little st a story here about uh i was uh trained with the um uh, the cane um and uh, my mobility instructor uh came to me one day and he had this this new stick he said hey let's try this uh, new cane it's a uh, made out of a new kind of material called microfiber or uh, something like that and uh and, it, and he said it's really light lightweight uh, easy to handle it doesn't wear your wrist and arm out as as bad so so uh, well yeah i'll give it a try so um 
Well, I took off to the store one day. I lived in town, and and uh, I would walk to the store, and uh, and uh, going along, man, this stick, man, it was really light. It didn't uh, didn't wear my arm out and stuff. And uh, anyway, went to the store and and uh, got a bag of groceries. And on the way back, I had the bag of groceries in my left hand and used my right hand for uh, for the cane going back and forth and i was just you know man it i just i was loving the stick and, and uh about halfway back to my apartment uh the front of the stick grabbed a hold of a um a crack in the sidewalk and pieces of that stick just went everywhere and i never did find all the pieces and uh and i only had like 12 inches of stick to get me back home you know back to my apartment and uh, which was a pretty good challenge and uh, i mean evidently i made it back all right and everything but but i had to go back and and uh, uh sometimes reach down with that stick and and try to figure out where i was at and of course i used my foot too to, to figure out where i was at but it's a good thing i was in a place that i was familiar with but, uh I don't know what would have happened, you know, if I hadn't have been. But uh, anyway, there, there's there was a you know, a little bit of story there that uh, you know that stick broke apart. Anyway, I, I I called the mobility instructor when I got back home and and told him I said I hope uh, uh, I asked him, did you want that stick back? He said, oh no, that's for you to to, to play with and stuff. I was like, well, that's good because it's in a in pieces between here and the store <laughs> and stuff and anyway he he agreed and me and him both agreed together that that uh, material that they made that stick out of was although lightweight it was really really uh, really flimsy and 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 could uh put you in a position you didn't want to be in uh you know especially if you're out in public and not knowing where you're going you know not knowing where you're at but but that's that's uh that, that beside that that's a uh, one way uh, people can get around and uh, or, or blind people can uh, can have mobility and and then there uh, the, the second way is a service animal and uh, which I, I have had one of the uh, one of those um, uh, really good uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, advantage of having a, a service animal Although they're uh, you know high maintenance and everything, but um, thing is you know you're you're he's working for you or the the animal's working for you and you're taking care of it, so it kind of goes back and forth. Um, but the uh, one thing I'll say uh, comparing uh, the cane with the animal is um, man when you break out that stick. Uh, you're in a store or whatever people they move they, they're going to move they don't want to be hit with that stick and um and you know so they kind of tend to go away from you but when you got the animal people uh tend to uh, uh want to come to you and, and pet the animal and ask you questions about the animal and everything and, and um which is uh it's a good thing i mean people ask you questions you can you can answer them and you know give them information and you know everything but it does make it hard uh uh because you know people want to pet the pet you know pet the dog but you you're not supposed to when they're in their harness when they're working and uh, i mean there's been times i just had to uh i had to take the harness off and just go ahead because uh when they had just the leash on uh they're, they're 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 a dog they're a pet but when they have that harness on that's when they're working and um you're not supposed to pet them with the harness on, and and I had trouble with that with mine, uh, but he he did do his job. I, I really I, he was a really good dog, and but uh, how this works is that you uh uh the the dogs are trained before you get to the school to be trained with them. You go uh, you go up there or go to the school, and you're there a month. But the dog has already been trained. He's he went through a, a long process to be trained, and and uh, well, yeah, the the human uh, the pupil goes to the school and and they learn the the hand gestures and the commands and everything to 
uh, along with the dog and uh, and uh, and you also uh, uh, when I signed up to to get a a, a dog they they asked me what was my preference my top three preference of what kind of dog I wanted and and of course there was uh, uh, my first one was a golden retriever the second one was a, a lab um, don't matter the color uh, and the um, third one German Shepherd and <clears throat> but I told them I really don't care what d kind of dog they give me I, I just don't want a dog that chases cars and uh, which they got a little bit of a chuckle out of that you know and everything and um but how it works also when you're there at the school they spend a couple of days uh, basically asking you questions walking with you and and uh, everything and uh, asking what you're uh what you like to do what do you do what kind of work you do uh, uh, and everything and they're just basically trying to uh make uh make your personality compatible with a with one of the animals that are there you know like if you have a like a mellow personality they want to put you with a mellow dog or if you have a hyper personality they, they want to put you with a hyper dog and um anyway uh i three or four days being into this uh or a couple days after being into this they they matched matched us up with a dog and so uh they matched me up with a uh, a yellow lab and uh me you know i i really don't know how uh these uh, i've never had done this before how these dogs um uh, react or act in certain situations so anyway we i was being trained with this with this with this dog and and uh uh, it came time to we put the harness on him and everything and and uh, we'd uh, we would walk around the block or two there around the training center and the uh, instructor the, t the trainer would would walk behind us and and see how it was going and everything and anyway I, I was walking down down the sidewalk with this with this dog and and uh, he kept wanting to uh, run into the grass and I kept having to pull him back and when we'd uh you know walk a little bit then he went right back into the grass and i'd have to pull him back and everything and, and uh we got back to the uh training center after all that and uh and my instructor told me uh what was going on uh he uh and my dog was wanting to uh chase squirrels so you know, I, I, I had told him, you know, as long as you give me a dog and don't chase cars, I'm all right. But uh, this one wanted to chase squirrels. And so uh, that didn't uh, work out too well and everything. But uh, anyway, they ended up taking that that dog. And, and uh, it was a sweet dog, really. Uh, he, what, he just wasn't suited for the job they say some of the dogs they, they they train and they train well but when they uh, get to where they uh start you know needing to do the job they just don't work out so they ended up making him uh sending him somebody for a pet and then they they gave me a, a different dog which was a, a golden retriever they give me and uh immediately i knew the difference when when um I got the uh, second dog, and uh, yeah, he was ready to work, and I mean, he just did his job, and he was he was an uh, outgoing, friendly dog. Um, had a very loud bark, but he was uh, a good dog. I mean, he was a, a 75 pound golden retriever, beautiful dog, and and um, but we had to double time with training because um, the first dog didn't work out. And uh, so I had to uh, get out, and we double double timed with the training and everything. But he did. He was a trooper, good dog, just 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 uh, so friendly. And, and and that was, but that was one of the big problems with him. He was a very friendly dog, and he wanted 
he was friendly with everybody and uh uh so uh, and i had a time you know keeping people from petting him and stuff and like i said there was sometimes i just had i went ahead and took the uh harness off and sat down and said go ahead and you know uh, love on him and stuff and everything and um but he was a really uh really really good dog and i mean and that's and that's a good uh uh way for a blind person to get around especially if you live in town um of course you can use uh the cane along with the dog that 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 works really good too and and um and uh and um and as i say this i want you to remember the trust that you have to put into even even the, when you use the cane you uh have to trust yourself and uh, trust your knowledge and then, you know, with the dog, you have to put trust in the dog. And the dog's got to put trust in you. Uh, you know, you, and, and plus the, the knowledge and the education that you get uh, with using these different tools. Uh, you have to trust in that. The third thing is the human guide. Um, which, to me, is the best way uh, to... Um, for mobility is a human guide as long as it's somebody that you can trust uh, when you put your trust in somebody uh, you're trusting that they're not going to run you into a wall i mean you're trusting that they're not going to uh, make you stumble uh, um, you're, you're trusting them to keep you from uh, any harm so, and how this works, you see some people, they'll put their hands on the person's shoulder. I don't, I don't like that uh, myself. Uh, I, I like to put my hand or cuff my hands on, on people's elbow. Uh, because from the elbow, I can uh, read uh, pretty much what's going on. I mean, for the most part, people will always, you know, you got to step here. Or you got a door here. We're going right. We're going left. Uh, but uh, for the most, uh, a lot of times, I mean, you can feel when somebody steps up. Okay, then you know to step up. Uh, a lot of times with 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 stairs, uh, I'll ask, "Is there a rail?" And then you know, if there is, I can just grab the rail, and, and that lets me know where uh, the stairs start and where the stairs end. Uh, but as I say, for the most part, you know, they, they, uh, most of my human guides have been uh, very informative and you know, letting me know oh, we're going left, we're going right. And like, but like I say, I can, most of the time I can tell by their elbow, uh, uh, which way we're going and stuff and, and everything. But, but as I said, uh, you got to put trust into that person, uh, that's leading you. You got to uh, put, uh, trust and that they're not going to uh, cause you any harm and um, and everything. And I, I, I bring these uh, three situations uh, together. I mean, you can um, you can use a um, a cane along with a human guide. You can use a cane along with the the uh, um, uh, service dog. You can also use a service dog along with a human. Uh, um, human guide and, and everything but uh and, and and they can all work together but you have to put trust in these things and uh and i say that to to get to this point that uh, those things can can fail you uh as i said with the with the stick you know when that stick it broke and then and um and then the animal wasn't it wasn't always uh, foolproof. I mean, most of the time it, it was they did a good job and everything, but it wasn't always foolproof. And then uh, you know sometimes the human guide, you know, they're, uh, we're human. You know, sometimes we we uh, make a mistake, forget to say something, or 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 forget to to let the person know, hey, there's this here or there. Or, but when you put your trust in the, the one that created us uh, when you put the one the all uh, in, in when you put trust in the one that's all knowing and and trust in the one that's all seeing and and um and all hearing and 
And uh, when we put our trust in God, and as the verse that said I read earlier, put uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now, all thine heart, not just part of your heart, not just twenty-five uh, percent of your heart, or 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 fifty percent or seventy, but put all your trust in God, and He will help you. I mean, He will uh, do for you what you can't do for yourself. You know, even with all your knowledge and and all these techniques you may know, and and. Uh, uh, he, he can do for you more than you can do for yourself or he can do do for you more than what anybody else can do for you uh he will protect you he will guide you he will lead and, and direct you and uh, uh but all we need to do is put all of our trust into him um after all he's the creator he knows all he sees all he sees what's ahead of us I mean, he sees what we don't see. He he knows what we don't know. And that's why, you know, uh, the writer there in, in, uh, in Proverbs had experienced that putting trust into God and leaning not to your own understanding. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him direct you. Because uh, after all, He's God. <laughs> what else can I say? He's God. And and if you put your trust into him, he will not fail you. He won't uh, lead you into walls. He won't lead you into a ditch. He won't lead you into doors. He will uh, help you up when you're down. He will uh, lift you up when you're depressed. Uh, no matter what is going on and whatever circumstances you're in, no matter... If it's an addiction you're fighting, if it's a if it's a a, a problem you've been uh, facing for all your life, whether it be a health problem, a physical problem, or a spiritual problem, or a mental problem, put all your trust into Him. He will take care of you. He He will He knows all those problems that you're having. He feels all those problems that you're having, and He wants to uh, help you. And and no matter what's going on, you know, uh, just just put your trust in him. Just, you know, all you do is just, Lord, I, I trust you. I don't know what's going on or why this is going on, but I trust you because you are my savior. You're my king. You're my everything. I want to uh, pray uh, with you right now. Lord, we thank you for everything you do for us. We thank you for being our God, we thank you for rescuing us, Lord, when we're in trouble. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that today we put our whole trust into you, Jesus, whether uh, if it concerns our uh, me mental state, if it concerns our physical state, if it concerns our physical, uh, spiritual state or financial state or, or whatever it may be, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to uh, move in no situation we do put our all trust into you lord and and 100 uh, percent, lord that we know that you're going to take care of us that you're going to make the way that you're going to deliver and that you're going to set free and we thank you for everything you do god and we thank you for this privilege today and we ask you lord that, that you help us hallelujah lord to put trust in you and and we just praise you today, and we thank you for it all. And we ask, Lord, as we go our way today, that you just keep your hands upon us. And, and, and we do, we do, from this day, Lord, we put all of our trust into you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope something said or something done uh, had blessed you today had lifted you up and like i said earlier after all that's what we're wanting to do we're wanting to lift you up um uh, hoping that uh, if you're out there and and um, you uh are having a little problems with uh some mobility if you're blind and and having some problems with mobility that that uh, i shared 
um, techniques and, and, and tools with you uh, that would help you to uh, to do that. Uh, I, if you want to send me an email or a letter, I can, uh, I'll give you my email address, uh, drsisco, that's um, drsisco at windstream, w-i-n-d-s-t-r-e-a-m dot net. That's drsisco at windstream dot net. Also, uh, address is 161 Red Rose, uh, that's R-E-D-R-O-S-E, two words, circle, Donovan, Missouri, D-O-N-I-P-H-A-N, Missouri, 63935. That's 161 Red Rose Circle, Donovan, Missouri, 63935. Until next time, I uh, thank you for joining me once again, and uh, we'll see you next time on the For His Glory podcast.